Kampala, the capital of Uganda, Christmas 2006. And there are babies begging in the street. Very small children, apparently alone. And a population so used to their presence that they just keep walking by. We watched this child for two hours. And in that time, one woman gave some money and another child came and brought some water. That's how the day continues for these babies. We assumed these children were orphans or street children, earning their daily food. We filmed the first baby from out of sight. But once we stopped, a group of women and children appeared and surrounded us. They told us they were the Karama Jong. And they lived in the Kasenyi slums in Kampala. There were 2,000 of them and 718 children. The babies on the streets were not orphans. They were placed there for maximum sympathy and income. The mothers were usually a few feet away out of sight, but ready to collect any money given. They told us they'd had to come to Kampala because their homelands were arid. They couldn't farm them anymore. They're coming because uh, their area has been affected by drought. This is in the absence of family structure. This is the absence of uh, viable economic. Kimi went to see the slums where they live. The pathways through the slums were an open sewer. And this was a dry day. We're going this way? Right there in that bowl, this uh, mace has been collected from the streets um, and they bring it um, and watch it and clean it and either eat it or resell it. Fifty people slept in here. And it's, I guess, it's sleeping, it's storage, it's eating, it's everything. And some of us should go out because I'm starting to feel like we're violating their space. Um, and I think what's even worse is that there's not anybody doing anything. I mean, one NGO, no government. Um, they need as little as 100 acres to resettle in a country that has, you know, thousands of acres of land. Um, so we're putting the Minister of Lands on the schedule as well. Their leaders told us that the government had offered to relocate them, but in lands on the other side of Uganda, a place they didn't want to go. There's obviously cholera. You can tell from the dysentery. Is it because the clinic doesn't have medicine or is it because there's no money to go to the clinic? There's no money. There's, there's no, no money. money. Okay. What's wrong with her baby? That you see the head. Mm. Several children in the slums had cholera. Many had malaria, skin rashes or other infections. I mean, what I'm going to do is essentially say we could take 10 of the worst kids, depending on what it costs, to go to the hospital and do it now. I think for us it'll be very little money. And they told us it would cost 5 to $20, and they just didn't have any money. So Kimi decided to take the sickest children to hospital. Right now we're trying to connect, you have an area MP, a uh, member of parliament. And so we're going to go to parliament and figure out what's happening. Even the MP is surprised that we want to go to see him on this issue. So, that just shows the level of marginalization. We went back the next day to collect them and take them to hospital. One three-day-old baby had died overnight. On getting to the hospital, we discovered treatment was free. Those with cholera were taken straight to the UNICEF cholera unit. But the rest sat all day, appearing to get nowhere. 
When we returned, they had had some tests, but most were untreated. For malaria. Oh, this is only a test for malaria. Because some of them have other issues, I think. Now what happened is if they had come earlier, they should have gone up the assessment center. That's why the rates for everything. But we were told they hadn't used the system properly. And we were to come back the next day. But over the next two days, it seemed the system did not make it easy for these people to use it. And in the end, after waiting another nine hours, they left without treatment. Yeah, because yesterday, one show, you know, there was the sense that, okay, maybe they hadn't followed the process, they were in the wrong area. Uh, we kind of, you know, were there, I was there, and, you know, cameras was there, so it kind of might have been, like, unfair to the hospital. So today we weren't there, there was no camera, I wasn't there, I wasn't thinking about going there, um, and they're still not getting treatment. And in the end, after waiting another nine hours, they left. Mm. Kimi went to speak to the MP for the district where the Kalmajong came from, to see what action was forthcoming. But the situation is very disastrous. Mm. You find, first of all, naturally the place is so dry, the weather conditions are very unfavorable, and to exacerbate the situation further is the cattle rustling, which has brought in a lot of difficulties in the place. He took us to see Pastor Monsieur Nakiru, who was one of the only people apparently working with the community. Everybody said you were the only person who had come to look at helping. There's big NGOs, nobody had even like uh, had the mind to come. Uh, I'm a Karamojo myself, mm. from Kotido. Where right now they are massacred, killed. So many people have been killed, the children have been burned. I brought so many children staying living with me, girls mm. and boys. Here in Kiseni, when you go, you find so many children, they are dying on the street when the water flows, flows with them. There's nobody, nobody who really takes care of these children. The MP then took us to meet the Minister for Disaster. He filled us in on some of the complexities of this situation. There's issues with, if you return them, there's ethnic rivalry. Um, the land they're going might not necessarily be theirs because in some government appropriation it was given to another tribe and their tribe still own it. So there's uh, clashes about who owns it. But put that aside, there's still eight other tribes who all come down to that area uh, to graze their animals. We were also told these are hard-working farming people, but with no land to farm. For the moment at least, the invisible Karamajong babies of Kampala go back to work.